Daphne, you said two things about Israel that just really made me take a, a double take when you said it. Uh, the first, and so I'm like, well, let's have this conversation. Let's just do it in front of everybody. The first one was, you said that you raised your two children to die for two things. Yeah. Jesus and Israel. Now, I think everyone here says, okay, yeah, I get the Jesus part. Uh, but where is, why include it, Israel into such a statement like that? Well, I mean, you can't get the Jesus part without the Israel part, in my perception. I mean, you're mm -hmm. talking about a Jewish Messiah who lived in the land of Israel, um, came and was actually mm -hmm. crucified as king of the Jews. Mm -hmm. So it's like saying to me, well, I don't care what's going on in your nation when I'm British. So just take it at that. Right. I, want to, I want to read a few scriptures which to me show the seriousness of not preparing our children. Genesis 12, I bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you, I will curse. Now, do we want our mm. children to be on the side of the blessing or the curse? I mean, you know, if we don't prepare them, they could end up on the side of the curse. And who's cursed by? By God himself. So first of all, we've got to get that alignment. I want my children to be on the side of blessing. And then he says in Zechariah, he who touches you touches the apple of his eye. When you mm. touch the apple of God's eye, you are mm. touching the most sensitive part of his body, and he is hyper aware of it. And mm. it's a part of the body you're going to protect to the end. So again, mm. are your children going to be a part of aligning with God to protect the apple of his eye, or they're going to be a part of, as we're going to see in a minute, attacking the apple of his eye. I mean, to me, mm. this is serious, serious, serious stuff that most parents or even people working with the emerging generation are not preparing them for. And then in Zechariah, it says this, on that day, I will make Na uh, Jerusalem a heavy stone for all peoples and all, all who lift it will surely hurt themselves, and all the nations of the earth will gather together. Now, all mm. the nations includes your children in your nation, my children in my nation. That includes children of the nations today who potentially mm. might have grown up and be in the position when these nations are going down against Jerusalem. I mean, do I really want my children to go and face Jesus himself, who is mm. calling the nations in and is going to wipe them out and consume them. Is that what I want for my children? No. Mm. And yet to them to not do that, they're going to have to die for it. They may well have to mm. die to refuse to be in that army. So, I mean, I can't think of many more serious things than this. And then let's take a glimpse to the end of the age, Matthew 25, when the Son of Man comes in all his glory and all the angels with him, and it goes on to talk about sorting the sheep from the goats, right? And the king will say to those on his right, come to me, all you who are blessed by my father, for I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. And he, he reels out the care of his people, Israel, and he is going mm. to separate the nations. Now, if they're not going to be prepared to die, to stand by that nation, they could well be separated on that day and be the goats. So I'm sorry to be a mm -hmm. bit blunt by this, but I, it, I want it to be a wake up call because Hey, folks, we need to get our children ready now. And I know for Andrew, um, in the light of my raising mm -hmm. like that, you have made serious decisions already in your life, haven't you? Based mm -hmm. on this, um, based yeah. on this. Yeah. And this isn't just information I was told, you know, we, how do you then practically live that out? So even yeah. when it comes down to, you know, political decisions, when it's votes about certain things, you know, one of the things that I consider is what is the effect of this when it comes towards Israel and the Jewish people. So, uh, mm -hmm. you know, I've tried to, you know, take these things that I've been told and look at very practical outworkings of what I've been, yes. what I've been given. So, I mean, when I say die for Jesus and die for Israel, I, I'm not using dramatic language. I, I, I believe I'm using prophetic language. And in some mm -hmm. nations of the world today, um, people lose their citizenship for standing by Israel and they are dying for him. Mm -hmm. So, yes. Um, I yeah. And, and that's not just something we're saying will happen in the future. Maybe no. there are people that are listening in America and they're saying, wait, mm. people are losing citizenships 
the standing by Israel. Yeah, this is something which is happening today in certain countries. So this isn't mm -hmm. just something that will impact us in the future. So I don't want my children, well, they're adults now, but I didn't want them to grow up and suddenly go, hey, what's this? And, and oh, no, I've got different values, right? Literally, they don't know a day of their lives. And I didn't say say to them these words. There are many things you don't have to die for. You do not have to die for me. Preserve your life. You don't have to die if it was became between mine and yours. But two things you always die for. You always die for Jesus and you always die for Israel.